Hello, everyone. Welcome to my webinar, Crafting Your Resume for Product Management Role. Before we get started, a few things about me. I'm Ashish. Uh, I'm currently a product manager at Facebook. And before this, I worked at Roku, Intuit, Microsoft, Nokia, and Infosys. Um, I'm really glad uh, to be here today and uh, help the aspiring product managers uh, succeed in the journey of getting into product management. I also want to thank uh, Berg School for giving me this opportunity to be here. Um, and let's get started. Uh, first thing is why resume matters, right? Um, per my experience, and I'm pretty sure you have this experience as well, career switching in general is difficult. And career switching into product management is even harder because there's uh, traditionally has not been any formal courses uh, or programs that would allow to make this happen. And in such cases where you are competing against other product managers uh, who are trying to get into the similar role where you are trying to get, your first impression is through resume, right? And so it's, it's basically your digital identity when you are not there. And that's why it, it matters a lot, right? Uh, one thing I do want to note here is the resumes are pursued by different people differently. And so there's no perfect source of uh, exact format, exact wording, uh, or some sort of structure that will be appealing to most of the, uh, all the people. Um, and an example I give here is like, it's just very similar to how people pursue other people. Uh, you take an example of a mom who, who always loves her kids, no matter what type of uh, clothes they are wearing or hairstyle, uh, but it, the same thing may not be appealing to other people and it's similar, right? But what today I'm going to do is share with you some of the recipes, the tips, uh, which will make your resume much more appealing to most of the audience out there, right? And then you can bring your innovation into that and make the resume even better. Cool. Uh, let's get started. Again, one more reminder, resume is your digital identity, right? And it's it's presenting you when you're not there. So don't think of it as just a paper or uh, a PDF or a Word document that you are sending. Imagine it as if you are standing there and talking to that person. And that's why it's very, very important how you create a draft, craft your resume, how do you put content in it, how do you structure it, how do you use white spaces in it. Um, <clears throat> all small details, and we are going to go into uh, three main tips. Uh, first, I'll tell you overall what it means, and then we'll, we are going to deep dive into each one uh, and look at some of the examples on how to get things done. All right, buckle up. So the first step is state your impact and do it concisely, right? Um, problem solving is a very important skill for a product manager. Demonstrating that through quantifiable impact is something hiring manager is looking for always in a product manager. And given that we said resume is the digital identity of you, if you are signing there, you need to prove that you can state the impact of your work and you can do that concisely, right? So keep this in mind just at the surface level right now that you want to state your impact and do it concisely in your resume. How to do that, looking at a couple of examples, we are gonna come back to it in, in some time, right? For now, just remember, state your impact and do it concisely, right? The next tip is be relevant. Um, of course, if you're trying to get into product management right now, you lack the PM experience. Uh, and so the hiring manager is looking for either relevant skills or impact demonstration that you may have done in your past roles, even if you are not product manager. So you wanna compensate your lack of experience with the relevant skills and impact demonstration, right? Again, just keep in mind this for now uh, that you wanna be relevant. You wanna find examples of your past roles, uh, which are more appealing in the next role. Uh, of the PM that the hiring manager is looking for. How to do that, few of examples, we are gonna come back to it in some time, right? For now, remember, you wanna be relevant. And the third one is, again, very important, design. Um, there are lots and lots of designs out there. Some people use colorful uh, with the heading being highlighted for the resume. Some people put images in there, your own picture. Some people try to make it more 
appealing through uh, aesthetic. Some people keep it very simple uh, using the white space. White space is sometimes your friend. When people are going to 240 or more resumes in a day, uh, they do want to find something which is more appealing to reading purposes, right? And so we are going to see some tips on uh, how to create a good design that's more readable and appealing, right? Uh, don't worry about it right now. Just keep it on top of your mind. We're going to come back to it. Uh, the three tips I shared, uh, let's go back to it. First, state your impact and do it concisely. Second, be relevant in what you're mentioning on your resume. And third, the design, you have to draft it very carefully to make it more appealing to uh, either a recruiter or the hiring manager, right? Let's get into each of these in detail and see a couple of examples as we go. So the first one I said is state your impact, do it concisely. Um, product managers are required by the nature of job to state the impact of everything that their team works on. You as a product manager either need to do this before you even start the project because probably you wanna convince the other teams whom you are dependent on. You wanna convince your own team you want to convince stakeholders. Sometimes you want to convince the leadership that, yes, this is the right project that we want to do. And so in that case, you are basically estimating what impact might be this project doing or what might be the customer problem and how much it is causing trouble. Um, if you already have done the project, after the fact, you anyways need to state the impact either for performance review or to encourage team, uh, celebrate your success and how much impact as your resume, uh, your project has made. And so in your resume, you need to be able to state the, demonstrate that skill and state the impact of the work from your previous role. And if, if you haven't done uh, anything that shows impact, probably you're wrong, you're not able to identify. We are gonna see how to identify the projects as well uh, in, in your past role in a couple of minutes. So don't worry, everyone uh, in day-to-day -day life is a product manager. Uh, even if you are making a normal decision, like, hey, I wanna uh, pick up my kids and go to grocery store, uh, which one do I prioritize first? And that's a product management, right? So. Don't think that in your previous role, you haven't had any examples. We are gonna see and come back to that, how to pick the examples, right? Uh, two things to note here. Uh, if, if you have a resume and you're trying to put together a few things on it uh, and you have job achievements versus job responsibilities, I would say always give higher importance to the job achievements. It's the demonstration of how you successfully achieved something in your previous role versus responsibilities are kind of generic and they don't give complete idea of how successfully you have uh, gone through those responsibilities, right? So if, if you have job achievements versus responsibilities, always try to prefer job achievements. And uh, I'm not saying don't totally give up on responsibilities. If responsibilities are also matching with the role, you might wanna include some of those, but if you are, may be making two to three points. First two points should be job achievements. The last point could be the responsibilities, right? Uh, we are gonna see some examples uh, in, in next slide, so don't worry about uh, how to do it. Uh, the second point I wanna mention is do not crunch too much information into a small space. Uh, I myself have done this in the past, try to keep very small margins and put everything because I think that's important. Uh, try not to do that. As, as a recruiter or a hiring manager who is going through lots and lots of resume every day, uh, if the resume is too much crowded, uh, it, it just gets ignored and people don't feel like reading through it. Imagine yourself having picking two books, one with some images and some white space and very nicely drafted uh, concise statements in, in a book, you feel like reading it. But if a book is like all the words from the left top margin to the right bottom, people usually not tend to go and read into those things, right? So keep that in mind, do not crunch too much of information. Again, I'm gonna show some examples in a couple of slides. Let's go and see one of the examples of how to state the, the job achievements versus responsibilities. On the right-hand side, you'll see this is uh, one of the sample from my older resume when I was trying to get into product management from engineering. 
Uh, and this was my very early draft where I started writing all the things that I felt are important to the product management. Um, and I kind of went with a very broad picture. Hey, I'm responsible for upgrading product technology or rapid development, UI design, product offering, et cetera, et cetera. So first thing you will notice is like, it's too much wordy and it's crunched in, in one uh, paragraph there. Uh, too much information, which was the second point, do not try to do this. Also, it's not very easily readable and it doesn't tell how much impact did I make? Did I successfully achieved what a uh, team was trying to do? Did I perform my responsibilities clearly? And if I did, what was the result of it? It does not communicate. And this is my digital identity speaking. So if I'm basically standing in there, uh, it's not gonna convey the right information, right? And so I took some time and reiterated it to make this happen, something like this at the bottom. Uh, and you will see now the paragraph is gone. There are three bullet points. First two bullet points are very specific in terms of what work was done and what was the impact, right? Delivered the uh, WPF MVVM architecture for most influential tax advising software, which increased the speed by 15%. What did I do? and what happened because of that. Same thing with the second point. And then the role I was trying to get into had something to do with uh, some of the um, skills related to C-sharp and SAML development, which was very relevant with the role, which uh, the work I was doing in my previous work, right? So <clears throat> I kind of put that as a responsibility point in there, delivered multiple projects, but again, it's, it's worded in a way that it feels like an impact. Right, so you can see the clear difference between the top and the bottom, where the top one is is crunching everything into one thing. It's talking very broadly about responsibilities, but it doesn't talk about the achievements at the job. And the iterative attempt, uh, which is at the bottom, tries to convert that into very very readable format. It also uses a little bit of white space and it makes feel, okay, this is what is important. This person has done X thing and that has resulted into Y thing. And either a recruiter or hiring manager can start thinking if this person comes into my team, how it's gonna impact my team, how this person can make my team successful, right? So try to keep this in mind, uh, state, your information in, in point wise and prefer the job achievements always try to state the impact, right? Uh, the second point was do not crunch too much information. Uh, we already saw a little bit of that glimpse in the previous slide, uh, but let's go through one more example, right? And think about, I have a thought that I wanna convey. When I started my own business, it has given me a whole new perspective to see the bigger picture when it comes to finding a work-life balance, right? Nothing wrong in the sentence on the surface level, but if you see it's like so big sentence, by the time you reach half, you're kind of forgetting why did I even start the sentence? And if I'm a hiring manager or a recruiter who's trying to go through this, it's too much for me to read through and I'm probably not gonna go through it and trouble myself, right? Just, I'm gonna leave it. So this is an example of if you have certain thought like that, do not put that directly in your resume, write it down. And then the second step of finding the right uh, concise statement from this is try to find out what are the important points that you are trying to convey to the party who is listening to you or reading your resume, right? And a simple way to do that, maybe you can start bolding uh, some of the words that you think are important. These must get conveyed. And so I thought about this sentence, exactly what am I trying to convey, <clears throat> right? I wanted to convey that I started my own business. So I was an entrepreneur, right? And so started my own business is kind of important thing. The second thing I'm trying to convey here is I found some new perspective, right? Um, and that perspective was something that's going to be our third thing. But I started something because of which this happened and that this is, I found a new perspective, right? And the third thing you want to, I, I'm trying to convey is what is this new perspective? I basically was able to find the work-life balance, the bigger picture of work-life balance, right? And so those I thought, okay, these are the, the important points that I'm trying to convey. And let's try to rewrite all this, making sure that these bold points get conveyed, 
right? Or even if you want to strip down further from this, that's okay too. So the, the point uh, can be made that uh, starting my own business has given me a new perspective on work-life balance, right? And if you see the, the bigger picture is gone and we are going to see why. But if you see now the, the thought initially we had was when I started my own business, it has given me the whole new perspective, blah, blah, blah. It's just too long sentence. The, the main thing it's trying to convey is as we see, saw three things, starting on business, it's kind of an entrepreneurship, finding new perspective, and what is that perspective? And the, the resume point, which is the last sentence here, tries to convey the exact same thing in a very short manner. Starting my own business has given me a new perspective on work-life balance. Look at the difference and see which one feels more readable. And resume is always like kind of a shorter space. So you want to use concise wordings and statements to do that, right? Um, a question might come, what happened to the bigger picture? You bolded it, right? Uh, the thing is, don't lose important information for the flashy word. Bigger picture is kind of a flashy word. It's not conveying uh, uh, relevant information here. Starting a business, good thing. It, it conveys that the entrepreneurship is there. What happened after that? Found a new perspective. What was the new perspective? Work-life balance, right? But work-life balance is like a bigger picture and all that. Th those are kind of flashy terms. If you want to use them, sometimes it's okay. But what happens in some cases is because people are trying to make sentences short, uh, sometimes they do enter the flashy words, which lend the the sentence and they try to then get rid of other information, right? So if you know what information you're trying to convey, don't get to the flashy words and try to remove the information that you're trying to convey. Let's see an example here. So uh, on the left-hand side, you see the manager really understood his employees, right? Really is kind of a flashy word. And what is happening here is that actually the statement is not conveying the information that it needs to convey. Manager understood his employees, but in what respect, right? What's the result of it or what exactly did the manager understand? And somebody has tried to crunch this to a smaller sentence and they prefer to use a flashy word against the information which might be actually conveying uh, important information that people should know about. Right, the, the sentence actually was the manager understood his employees in depth, valuing them as people as well as employees. Right, so that's that's the thing. Maybe there was some session uh, on managers treating, or there was an offsite where manager got together with employees, and he basically started understanding that these are not just employees; these are also people. They need some time off. They have their families. They need to spend time whatever it might be, right? But that's, that's a valuable information that should get conveyed instead of using flashy words like really. It really is just trying to put an emphasis and it sometimes makes a difference when you're talking verbally because you can really emphasize it and say the manager really understood his employees, right? But that doesn't happen when you're trying to write it down on the resume, somebody's reading it. It's just a word that is not conveying information. Instead, you probably want to remove that and put something that is conveying information, right? Cool. Hopefully, these examples are helpful. Let's look at the second one. Uh, we saw the second one uh, tip was be relevant, right? Um, product managers in general are supposed to be great at breaking down the complex problems. How do you prioritize and design solutions, et cetera? Right? And in your mind, you probably know, yes, I can do this if a challenge comes. But how do you let other person who is reading your resume know that? It's through your organized resume. Right? Uh, resume is kind of your product that you are trying to make it better. And what you want to convey here is how relevant you are to the job. What are the achievements from your previous role that are going to be helpful here? Right? So one, there are two tips again here on, on the screen. One is like, show your best achievements that match the job description. And we are gonna see in the next slide how to do that, like how to come up with those examples and how to word them. And the second one is make it easy for the hiring manager to find your value. Some people do that through bolding the sentences or part of the sentences. Uh, some people underline things. Uh, 
or some people use white space in in a very creative manner so that without bolding or underscoring the sentences uh, the value automatically comes out right i prefer the third one because then if people start bolding it it's just like people feel i, I have so much important thing and ultimately every sentence starts becoming bold and it's too much distracting instead of helping uh, a manager or recruiter to like find the value right we are going to see some some examples in this one too in the next slides so this one is about how to show your best achievement that matches the job offer this is again uh, one of the examples from when I was trying to move from engineering to product management some time back, uh, and I, I couldn't find very easily hey, what's what's the project that could be relevant and how can I make it look like it was a product management project versus purely an engineering project. And a simple way to do that is just take a spreadsheet, create three columns. The first column is put all the projects that you have worked on, right? And don't worry if it's a product management project or not. We're going to find out how to make that happen. But put all the projects that are there, right? Once you are gone through this exercise, you're going to like get surprised. Oh, this project was actually a product management project, and I just didn't know how to frame it, right? So put all your projects on uh, column A. On column B, then try to figure out what did that project change. You, made, you did some work, maybe as an engineer, maybe as a marketing person, maybe as a salesperson, what did it change, right? And then the third column, we are going to think about how to put that in end resume, how to present it in a format that it feels like it, it was a product management project and it did make a big impact. And this is an example. Uh, it, it was a very simple project. I worked as a software engineer. Uh, I worked on an automation script, basically. The script, what it did was uh, we used to ship the desktop software and then uh, every year the, the version would be different. And so when the version goes out, uh, sometimes it would crash. You may have seen on Windows OS if you if you use Windows OS or if ever used Windows OS before. And sometimes it, it gives a message that, hey, the, the application crashed, uh, send a message to a developer uh, and, and send the report with it. So some people do click on send information and that's the crash report we used to receive. And uh, when the software would go out within first two weeks, there would be like hundreds of crash reports coming from all over the places. And then somebody had to manually go scan through it and figure out what were the problems, right? And it's not easy when you have 500 crash, resume, uh, crash reports to figure out which one is important, which one to prioritize first and uh, how many of similar crashes are happening. If there's one common uh, reason for five different crashes or five different people reporting it, right? So all these, I basically created a script that would open up a folder, open up all these files, go through it, read through the crash, uh, crash errors and basically at the end generate an analysis um, and um, of, of the data on what exactly happened, what, what are the crash reasons, how many times this crash has happened because of this particular error. Uh, and all that uh, automation was basically done to create that analysis, right? How do I present this in my resume? If, if you look at just the left column, it's somebody might say, hey, it's purely engineering project. It's just a script, right? What's there in product management style in this one? But look at the column C now, it says, I automated data generation and analysis for the crash reports that sped up the prioritization and implementation with 60% time saving. Basically, this whole uh, analysis, the manual way of going through it, figuring out how many uh, reasons are there for crashes, which reason is the most prominent, all of this was taking out more than five weeks. Right, but the automation of the analysis brought it down to five minutes of analysis and then figuring out the the <clears throat> implementation of fix was just then remaining for the two weeks. Most of the part which was taking time here was analyzing which crashes are more important, what are the reasons that was solved. And that's what the column C tries to convey. And now it much more feels like uh, a product management uh, type of a project or a product manager is talking to a person, right? Automated data generation and analysis for crash report that sped up prioritization and implementation with 60% time saving. You always need to state what impact did your project make, right? So hopefully this uh, kind of approach helps you. 
just create three columns, left-hand side, put all your projects, middle column uh, on the B, try to put what it changed, what was the impact, and then try to come up with a sentence on column C. How do you want to present it in your resume that it makes feel like a product management project and it feels like you are a product manager who is speaking, right? Let's go to the next one. Make it easy for the hiring manager to find a value. <clears throat> Again, this is uh, one of the early versions of my resume, but this is what I was trying to do by using a white space and trying to find what was mentioned in the job description and how to make it come very appealing in, in this format. So if you see on the top, very first sentence I wrote was uh, well-rounded industry experience from understanding requirements, design, blah, blah. Right, it's a little bit lengthy sentence. I didn't like it, I ultimately changed it. But the very first sentence was very relevant to the job description. This is what the manager was looking for. It was looking for somebody who, uh, who is a junior type of a product manager who has work on field in gathering customer requirements and work with the designers, prototype it and basically launch the product. And that's my very first sentence in the summary. The second thing the job uh, description mentioned was the product manager we are trying to hire needs to be an excellent communicator. And on the right side of the skills, which is usually where people put their attention, I have this mentioned in my skills, I'm an excellent communicator. And the third thing I try to convey here is like, not the exact title of my role, uh, but I tried to convey what other things apart from software engineering was I doing. I was also an innovation catalyst at Intuit. I was also taking on some of the product management projects and acting as a product manager uh, on those projects. And I tried to convey that information, making uh, a recruiter and a hiring manager very interested in my role. Uh, and as a result, when they saw this resume, basically uh, I got called and they said, your resume is like very impressive. We haven't seen <clears throat> this type of resume where it's like a combination of so many different skills, right? <clears throat> this is basically, um, you can say a science, looking at what the other party is looking at and then crafting your resume according to that. And, and that's what I tried to convey here and make it easy for, for people who are looking to hire, make it easy for them to see the value you are bringing to the table and how that value matches with what they are looking for. All right, let's go into the last part, the design. Um, this is, I found on one of the website and it, it felt really uh, good to what happens in a real life and real life could be even more complex. But Approximately, let's say in a day for a role, there are 240 applications that are coming. Only 120-ish kind of data screen call or even less, I, I wouldn't even say it's 120. Um, and then few of them go through some of the early assignments, few of them get interviews, uh, maybe few of them get the second interview and a one person at the end gets an offer. So you can see in a day that 240 applications came in, out of those only one person is getting an offer, right? And out of these 240, maybe you can say 100 people are already product managers. 140 people might be somebody who is outside, not product manager, but interested. And this depends of course on the role. If it's a very junior entry level low, uh, role, there might be more people uh, who are not in product management trying to get and trying to apply here. <clears throat> if it's more like a technical product management management role, again, there are going to be a lot more software engineering resumes, uh, project managers who are trying to switch into PM. If it's more like a senior PM role, most of the resumes are going to be the, the <clears throat> seasoned product managers versus people who are trying to get into this role. Uh, but keep in mind that there are like lots and lots of resumes and application coming and only few of them are getting interviews, few of them are getting screened, few of them are getting to the second round and only one person is getting an offer. And so if those all things are happening, designing your resume becomes a lot more important, right? If, if the design we saw earlier is too much crunch with the information, if it's filled from the left top corner to the right bottom, it becomes less readable, there's no white space, it doesn't feel like readable. And then you are probably going to be that the, the bottom space where you don't even get screening calls, right? You just apply and then left out. So here are some seven uh, things that I would say keep in mind uh, when you design your resume. 
First thing is make your resume as long as it needs to be, right? Many people ask me, hey, uh, I have heard it's, it should be a one pager, which is a good thing because it's like all the points you have seen so far, make it concise and, and try to keep your information only relevant to the job that you're applying for. And so ideally one page would be good, but if you have information that's flowing out, don't try to again crunch it in one page and make it again like not have white space at all, completely fill from left to right. Uh, it's it's okay to go to the page too. And I have always had a two page resume for all the roles that I have applied. It's not that bad. Uh, it's it's definitely better than uh, an attempt to crunch everything in one page and which is completely filled and not readable, right? So uh, I'm not saying make it more lengthier, put all the information, again, try to find which is relevant to you. But if you feel that it's, it's making too much cruncher in one page, it's okay to go to the page two, right? Make it as long as it needs to be. Uh, I would say at, at all costs, try to avoid going beyond two pages, then it feels like, uh, again, we get into that uh, first point, people are not going to read through three or four pages of resume. So one to two pages is, is ideal. Uh, one page is preferable by most, but it's okay if you go to page two. Uh, second thing, choose the right font. Your font is again gonna make people either feel your resume readable versus not. Uh, in my resume, I have used Cambria uh, font. It's not necessary to use the same thing, uh, but try to use a, a good font that makes you feel like formal. Uh, don't use something like Comic Sans. Uh, that's mostly maybe for designers uh, who are trying to show that how funky designs they can make. Uh, but for a product manager, try to use a little bit of formal font, which puts the right margins within two lines and within two characters and make it feel like very readable content. Third thing, it said the right margins. It could be um, minimum, mid-level, large ones. I wouldn't say put a large ones because that's like wasting too much of white space. Uh, ideal would be like a middle uh, margins that doesn't spend a lot of uh, real estate, but also gives you a little bit white spacing to make your resume feel appealing. Uh, try all different settings you want to try uh, before you send out a resume or finalize it and put it in a PDF. Try to change the, the, the margins and see which one makes your resume feel more readable, right? <clears throat> Couple of very small things, divide resume into different sections. You wanna probably have the summary, you wanna have your skills, then you wanna have your uh, experience. Those kind of three sections for sure go there. Uh, if you have some other sections, uh, think about if they're adding any value when you are sending your resume. If they do, feel free to put them there, right? Uh, very important point, use very clear headlines, right? For the example we saw earlier, uh, I mentioned, uh, tried to mention what other roles I do apart from software engineering. I do innovation catalyst. I also do some projects in product management. And so even if my formal title is software engineer, I have been doing some work in all other fields. So be clear in your headlines, make those bolds and uh, make it easy for people to capture that value not necessarily you need to put your formal title always in there. You need to put something that's helpful for the person who is looking at it to see how you're relevant to the role, right? Um, the next thing is make smart use of a white space. It's your friend, like I said, if it's too much crunched in one space, uh, no matter how important the information is, people are not going to read it. So use it wisely, uh, the white space and put some margins uh, between different sentences or different sections. So it feels like, okay, I have ended one section, take one sec pause, now I'm going to the second section, things like that, right? And the last thing is don't overuse bullet points. Um, it's, it's a good way of communicating your value. Uh, but sometimes people just use too many of them and then it, it just becomes a distraction. Uh, so be cautious about that. It's, it's not a biggie, but uh, you may want to keep that in your mind. Right. Um, and some parting thoughts by the end. Um, I would say update your LinkedIn profile um, because that's kind of another digital resume nowadays, right? 
uh, you probably want to have some data back points on on your LinkedIn profiles as well. Uh, it's it's a little bit uncomfortable because you don't know what information you can expose. Uh, so you can always try to skip the actual data impact, but try to say it, it, it has been improved. Some product improved the, the time, it saved a lot of cost, et cetera. But try to put it in, in an impact format if you don't want to uh, include the exact numbers because you're not sure if you are supposed to disclose those numbers publicly. Um, the other two important points at the bottom is increase your network. Uh, it's, it's very important people, recruiters who are trying to hire for PM roles, you need to be in, in their surface. You, you need to be someone who, is, who would come to, come to top of their mind if they're trying to hire. Uh, and, and so try to connect with them on LinkedIn or anywhere outside of the LinkedIn in any, any network possible. Uh, and the last point is try to find someone who can refer you. Uh, or if you are trying to switch within your company, try to find someone who can sponsor you and say, yes, this guy has been proving uh, themselves, this, this person has been proving uh, himself, herself uh, as a product manager. And I think it, he or she would be great if becoming a product manager. So try to find someone like that. Um, one, one last thought, which is not here on the slide, I'm gonna say this don't be afraid to create different versions of your resume. We saw earlier that try to find examples which are closer to the role that you're applying for. And so that means if you're applying for 10 different roles, you cannot send one single resume to all 10 different jobs. You probably need to find good examples. And this is where our spreadsheet uh, um, study is going to help. Once you have all the projects, you, it would be very easy for you to pick which project is important to that specific role. And then you can create different versions of your resume that matches with that role and send it out. Don't be scared to create these versions. At one time, I'm going to tell you I have 13 different versions of my resume when I was trying to get into product management. So don't be scared. Uh, create versions. Make sure that it, it looks good. Uh, it has concise wording, it conveys the important points that are relevant to that job, it conveys all the important projects that you want to say these are relevant to this job and this is what my achievement is, right? Uh, and at the end, if you need to find any of the links to my webinar, either previous or this one, I'm going to add this one as well when the recording is available. Uh, it's under my profile. So if you see uh, my profile on LinkedIn, there is a section volunteer experience under which we have product school, a featured speaker at product school. And under that, you will find all the links to, to the webinars. And if you have any questions, you are expecting some answers uh, or you want to find some helpful material uh, on how to get into product management, uh, some product managers will come together and build this group on a LinkedIn called Navigating Career to Product Management. Feel free to join it. If you have questions, ask it. Me or other product managers can help answer it. And there is also some material which probably is going to help you in uh, preparing for the interviews. So uh, keep a note of these two things. Um, and at the end, I'm just going to say good luck.